Hi, and welcome back to Pacifica Science. If you check out the board behind me, we're going to go through the notes and what we did in class today. I'll also link it down below for pacificascience.org. Um, these videos are as much for the parents and guardians as they are for the students. It's a quick rundown of what we did in class today, what you can expect in, in terms of assignments, where we've been, where we're going, review, preview, just like they do in the CPM math books. Uh, I like to do review, preview in here. And I want to point out a few things as I go about you know, how we teach this class, how you can expect the next week to look and why we teach it the way we do. So let's jump on in. Um, the first thing up here, the HW of course stands for homework and the homework uh, abbreviation up there um, is circled twice, once in red. I really wanted to point that out. We've had a couple of tests so far, a couple of really brief quizzes and two vocab assignments. And really in the first couple of weeks, kind of getting up to speed on the online learning, the distance learning until we're back in the regular classroom. It's been sort of like Fastballs right down the middle. The, the, the basic vocab and the test have been pretty straightforward and pretty basic. This one on Wednesday is our first kind of larger recap. It's 20 questions, multiple choice, and it's online. Everyone's been emailed exactly how to access the test. From the time you click on taking the test, from the time you click enter on the test, you have two and a half hours to complete it. So that's plenty of time to complete it there. If you have your notes, if you've been keeping up with the class, and again, that's encouraging you to go back on pacificascience.org and look for any notes you might have missed. It should be, hopefully, pretty straightforward. Um, there's no curveball questions or anything in there like that. Sorry, I keep throwing in the baseball idioms there. But if you look at the test, it is due by 3 o'clock on Wednesday, and believe it or not, week 6. This means it's already progress report week. So make sure you take your time with it. You have your notes ready to go when you begin. That'll help out a lot. And You'll notice now we've kind of fallen into a pattern. Wednesday is an assessment or test day, uh, usually due by three o'clock. And usually Friday is either vocabulary or some other kind of assignment. We have a slightly different assignment due this week, and I'll talk about that right at the end when we talk about the vocab. Um, the recap. The recap does a lot of what I call, what they call, spiral teaching. Spiral teaching really means that you're going back on things that you've done already. You're going back on things that you've seen before. In this case, we're starting with the Big Bang. We talked about that. Remember, the real focus of this class is on biology and evolution, but you have to talk about some other areas of science for it to kind of make sense. In other words, we start talking about molecules and atoms and how they get together to make long chains and things like that. Well, where do these atoms come from? That's what we talked about with the Big Bang 14 billion years ago. Well, 13.7 billion years ago, if you want to be exact. We talked about this last week, how at the beginning, of the universe when the hydrogen atoms that came about after things cooled down a bit after the Big Bang, the hydrogen atoms came together under the force of gravity to make stars. At this point, there's no life or anything yet in the universe. There's just stars. And you've got the stars, again, getting together under the force of gravity, fusing together. You can kind of think of it like almost like Plato getting smashed together. Again, you go into that in more detail in chemistry, but we talk a little bit about it in here. And the stars make the heavier elements. Stars don't last forever. And when a star explodes, when a star ends its life, especially with the force of that explosion, as it throws these elements out into space, it creates the conditions where we can start talking about the beginnings of life. And fortunately for us, when it makes those elements, we saw the periodic table, I think the second or third week, and we saw those 92 naturally occurring elements, 90 of which can be found right here on Earth. There's some other elements too that, we've made, that we make in labs and things like that. Fortunately, those elements don't just stay apart as separate elements. They do eventually, many of them, come together and combine together to make, well, longer chains of elements. In other words, the atoms get together to make molecules. That's what we talked about last week. They stick together in dozens and dozens of variety of ways for biology. Dozens doesn't quite cover it. But if you look at the ways that they stick together, that's where we get into the cool stuff, the biology. This is where we're at now. So that's things that we've seen before. We did a brain pop at the beginning that talks about cells, but this is where we get into the new, the exciting stuff. We talk about the particular four, and four elements that are really, really important for life. There are others, of course, but these are the big four, C-H-O-N, Chon. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Carbon especially. 
the brain pop that we had earlier talked a little bit about, uh, he was using Legos as his analogy. I happen to use a Lego analogy as well. And it just, Legos are a good analogy for this one because if you've ever played with Legos, carbon is like the perfect Lego. It, it's a perfect atom that can combine with itself, it can come with other carbons, I should say. It can combine with other elements. It makes these long chains. Really, scientists, biologists, chemists have a really hard time picturing any life without carbon. Carbon is just absolutely an amazing atom the way it combines. And when we were talking about the structure of atoms, part of the reason we did that is a little bit later. Oh, I would say in about two weeks, we want to talk a little bit more in detail about why is carbon so good at combining? Why is it the perfect Lego? Why is it combined with other things so well? To understand that, we have to understand just a little bit about the structure of atoms. That's why we did it last week. We talked a little bit about electrons and things like that. So C-H-O-N, I asked students to look this up on the periodic table, but from all three of the classes that we did today, students were able to immediately shout out, hey, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, which is awesome. Most of the time on the periodic table, you can figure out what element you're looking at from the symbol. Sometimes it's a little tricky. They use Latin names sometimes. You know, gold is AU, for example, things like that. But those are pretty straightforward. Here is the part where it gets stunningly, awesomely, incredibly amazing. This is the type of thing where when you really think about it, you know, it's amazing that we don't walk down the street every day saying, do you realize that around three and a half billion years ago, there was a molecule that developed on Earth that was able to make copies of itself. In other words, when you're talking about life, the stunningly amazing thing about these elements and where they came from, and then combining to make molecules, and then having the perfect conditions here, having the water, which we talked about, having the conditions where these molecules can get together and make copies of themselves, this is really the focus of the class. Three and a half billion years ago, roughly, 3.7 billion years ago, really, based on the fossil record, you've got molecules coming together that can make copies of themselves. DNA, early DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. Very, very cool stuff. If you check out the right side of our notes today, let's a little switch it real quick. There's a TV that we used to talk about electrons last week, if you remember last week's video. Here you go. <clears throat> now let's talk about the life part. One of the assignments that we're going to be doing this week, so this week is not a straight vocabulary assignment at the end of the week. I'll be talking more about this one on tomorrow's video and tomorrow's note poem. Your assignment is simply to take a piece of paper. I took This is the example class and fold it. If you fold it four times, you get yourself 16 squares. I'd like you to cut them up because they act like little cards, like playing cards. And probably all of us at one time or another have played a game with cards. If you can sort out the cards. Here's the fun part. Here's the part where I want us to work on our observation skills and get outside and really check out the life right here in town. Remember, I'm trying to keep this course as local as possible. Check out the life around you. Um, you can include any 12 things that you see. I'd like you to include these four, by the way. Bacteria, mold, coyote, and whale. These have all been observed around town this week. I've had pictures um, of each of these up on the website and pictures actually the coyote right outside the classroom right now as I'm making this video But if you check out uh, coyote whale mold and bacteria There's four right there your job is to look at 12 more things 12 more different things that you observe It could be anything from you know your your dog or your goldfish to your, your little brother go outside look for birds bugs trees Just make them different and I want you to think like a biologist. I want you to make a couple of categories and think for yourself. If it was up to you to divide these things into categories, how would you do it? Would you do it things that swim, things that fly? How would you divide them? Again, there'll be more information on the notes, which I'll uh, link down below. But just like Aristotle, who we've mentioned in class a couple of times, just like Aristotle about 2,000 years ago started to figure out in biology, how would you divide things? He was thinking about this. Um, I want you to think about it. Let's, let's do this ourselves and think about, just like we're biologists and we are biologists, how would you, if it was up to you, so it, would, it, so it was easy to study, how would you divide up life? And then, of course, when we come back together in class, we're going to talk about, okay, how do we currently divide life? But, and this is important, it is not all said and done. It is not at all a, an end game right now. They are still working 
on how they're going to divide up the currently six kingdoms of life. When I was in school about 07th, 8th grade, um, it was five kingdoms of life. Now we're at six kingdoms of life. Um, I would suspect that they're going to be subdividing a couple of the um, kingdoms in a little while. And as a matter of fact, they even have some super kingdoms. We'll talk about that in the book. The point is, it's not all said and done. The things that we're learning in this class, especially when we talk about how we divide up life, those things are ongoing. That's the cool part. And then finally, the very, very last thing, these 10 key terms. Usually we have about 10 key terms a week, but these 10 key terms will carry us over two weeks. There's a lot of information here. We're going to be spending a lot of time on chapter two. And these 10 terms will definitely, uh, you know, we're going to Take our time enough so that we get through the curriculum and really have a deep understanding of this stuff. But these 10 terms will definitely take us over two weeks. I do want to point out one last thing. Notice that cell is up here twice, or excuse me, nucleus is up here twice, once for a cell and once for an atom. I found that it's really, really useful to point out to students that they use the same term, uh, the nucleus of an atom, the nucleus of the cell. In other words, what's the difference between the two? They happen to be the same term but they mean very different things when you're talking about a cell or an atom. So that's where we are this week. Don't forget your Wednesday by three o'clock online test is out there. Take your time with it, but make sure you use your notes on it. And we'll return tomorrow with another video and some more notes down in the, uh, in the links below. Take care, have a good week everybody, bye-bye.